You're listening to Health Professional Radio with Wayne Buckler. Today my guest is Chris Ings, General Manager of Oceana Oncology. Hello Chris and welcome to Health Professional Radio. Hi Wayne, thanks for having me. Chris, now Oceana Oncology, tell us first of all what geographic footprint you operate in because for a lot of our listeners uh, in different places around Australia and around the world it may not be relevant. So let's talk about the geographical footprint you service and then what is it that you actually do? Certainly, Wayne. Um, at the moment, we really are focused in southeastern Queensland. Uh, we started in 2010 in, in the Sunshine Coast, and we've expanded into the Wide Bay, uh, which is Bundaberg and Harvey Bay, over the past uh, year and a half. Uh, and we have another site in North Lakes, just north of Brisbane, uh, that's just started building now. So we'll complete that toward the end of this year. Okay, so it's in that southeast Queensland footprint. And what services do you offer there, Chris? If we are focused on radiation therapy, so uh, we have linear accelerators uh, that provide radiation therapy to solid tumours. Okay. Now, most of our listeners, as, as you know, are uh, clinicians, but one of the um, common mistakes I've made with, with dealing with health is that I used to assume that everyone in health knew everything there was about health, but in fact, that's not the case. Um, lots of people are highly specialised and only deal in their areas. So just explain to us solid tumours and, and what the sort of scope and range that is. Absolutely, Wayne. Um, you know, my, my background was as a physiotherapist and I, I knew nothing of radiation oncology before getting into this field. So uh, solid tumours refer to tumours of, uh, you know, not blood-borne tumours and, you know, of, of solid tissues, so obviously bone or muscle or, you know, many other tissues. Um, and radiation therapy uses a linear accelerator. In the past, we, we used to use cobalt machines and they actually have a radioactive source. But nowadays it's it's akin to your microwave. Um, it has a, an on and an off switch, and when it's off, there's absolutely no radiation. The radiation is very uh, uses highly complex uh, algorithms and planning techniques to focus the therapy on the on the tumor and spare as much of the healthy tissue as possible. So that's really the aim of radiotherapy is to try to get a high dose of radiation to the tumour and, and spare as much of the healthy tissue as possible. Tumours being fast um, growing um, pathology as such are highly sensitive to radiation, so it's a very effective means of uh, tumour control and still remains the most cost-effective uh, modality in in cancer care. Now, Chris, is it the case that you get patients referred to you from both the private sector and the public sector? Yes, at at the moment we have three sites, so Harvey Bay, Bundaberg and Sunshine Coast, and all of those sites have contracts in place with the public sector. So we see a mix of both public and private patients uh, with our doctors uh, being either honorary employees or or, uh, half day employees by with with Queensland Health um, obviously in southeast Queensland it's just Queensland Health and um, yeah, they they consult those patients in the re- respective public hospitals and then we treat the patients locally in our clinics now one of the things that uh, clinicians say to us is that sometimes they feel like they're just at the long end of a list of lowest cost providers what is it that you'd like to tell clinicians in hospitals about your services? I think radiation oncology is probably one of the few, particularly, you know, just carrying on from the the public sector engagement, I think it's one of the few disciplines that has really engaged with uh, public sector provision. Um, There are many uh, contracts and many kind of agreements in place where private providers are are providing radiotherapy services uh, services to public patients. Um, So I think and, and it's really developed. So this year, you're, you're, we're seeing in Queensland all the tripartite uh, radiation uh, practice standards are being implemented, which was something implemented by the College of the Medical Physicists, so the radiation oncologists, and the radiotherapists uh, came up with some very comprehensive quality control measures and those are now being implemented and audited in all private and public radiotherapy centers. So I think radiotherapy is actually leading the way in focusing both on quality. Um, Cost control is obviously always a factor. I think it it will continue to be a factor in healthcare in any 
means, but but there's a real focus on quality and and radiotherapy has some kind of key benefits in in that those quality measures are relatively easy to uh, monitor and to get data on, probably easier than many other medical specialties. So I think radiotherapy is probably leading the way in in many instances in um, a focus on on quality and not just cost. Um, obviously, I think many suppliers of of uh, goods that you know may may struggle to uh, see those kind of changes. But I think from a service provision, we really are seeing um, a good engagement with the public sector in Australia, far, probably far better than what I've experienced in the UK or or in South Africa. If you've just joined us, you're listening to Health Professional Radio with Wayne Buckler, and I've been in conversation with Chris Ings, the General Manager of Oceana Oncology, a firm of radiation oncologists who operate from just north of Brisbane through to the Harvey Bay area in southeast Queensland. Chris, if there was one uh, misconception about your business and your product and services that drives you nuts at night and keeps you awake, what would that be? I think the one kind of uh, issue that we that many of our, our patients, um, particularly our private uh, patients, experience is that on arriving for treatment is finding out that radiotherapy is not covered by their health insurance. Um, I think this is, you know, throughout their treatment uh, or, you know, their patient kind of care pathway, they're finding that, you know, many of their, their fees are covered by private health insurance. But because radiotherapy is largely funded by the Medicare, um, it's, the co-payments are not, uh, due to current legislation, are not able to be funded by private health insurance. And it does mean that out-of-pocket costs are significant for our patients. So we're finding that a real uh, challenge. Um, obviously, a cancer diagnosis and all the long line of treatments that patients receive before us put them under significant financial strain. So I think that's probably the single biggest challenge we're finding in the industry, particularly in the private sector. That is a surprising outcome. I I had in my mind an assumption that something as uh, basic and fundamental as radiation treatment would would in fact um, be covered, but it's it's interesting that it's not. Uh, Maybe it's one of the things that in the future we'll see corrected. Chris, for people who have heard the interview and want to get in touch with you, um, I guess... The best spot is your website at www.oceanaoncology.com or if they call you on 07-5479-0444. Let me just give you that number again because I could probably string those digits together in a better way. So pencils ready, 07-5479-0444. Correct. It's been a pleasure chatting to you this morning. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Great. Thank you. Thanks for your time.